Speaker number three is Abel Toastmaster Ty Patton with a few tips in hopes of helping others avoid some of the colossal blunders and mistakes he has made in one of our Toastmasters. Ty assures all of us he has made almost all the blunders and mistakes any one Toastmaster could ever make. Not just once, nor twice, or three times, but over and over and over. With his speech title, You Can't Live Long Enough to Benefit from Every Mistake You Could Make on Your Own. Please join me in welcoming ATM Ty Patton. By a show of hands, how many of you have been in the Winter Park Toastmasters Club for less than two years? Two years or less? Look around the room and see how many people that are here. More experience. Now, how many of you who raised your hands, actually for the entire audience, how many of you have attended a fireside chat to hear from the experts within this club? Okay. Number one, I want to encourage everyone. Take advantage of the fireside chats. Because we can't possibly, there's some wisdom in the statement that it is imperative that we learn from others because we cannot benefit from the mistakes that we make in our lifetime. We cannot make them all in recovery. Fellow Toastmasters, guests, members of the head table that have dispersed and one of the things that we can all learn from is from each other. And not just at the fireside chat, this morning has been phenomenal. How about those table topics? Carmelo, a, uh, DTM Carmelo Ballardo III did a fantastic job at giving you those pearls with which to work. And this is the audience in which to use those. Because, let's face it, we all have a bit of entrepreneurism, a bit of chutzpah within us that drives us beyond what the average person who is just comfortable to sit back on the sofa at night and doze off watching TV. We want to make a difference. We want to improve ourselves so that we can make that difference. Those of us who have been involved with the mentoring program, I want to encourage you to reach out to the newer members and acquaint yourself with them and offer your services. Those of you who have not yet gotten a mentor, I encourage each of you to look around at those that are speaking and find someone that you feel that you can trust. Not necessarily that you like. Mm. Two different things. <laughs> <laughs> but someone that you trust. I have had the privilege of mentoring Jay Shaw. And when he approached me about being his mentor, this is a number of years ago, when he was new in the club, I said, I'll do that on one condition. He said, what's that? I said, well, that you will listen to what I say, and if I suggest something to you, you seriously consider taking my suggestion and implementing it. Because I only have your best interest at heart. And as many of you who know Jay Shaw know, within a year he had won 10 trophies. <clears throat> That's awesome. I think it took me 20 years to win 10 trophies. <laughs> And about six months into our mentoring teamwork here, he approached me and said, may I ask you a question? I said, sure, go ahead, anything. He said, when you told me that there would be things that you would suggest I do that I may not want to do, when did that begin? Hmm. And I got to tell you, my heart just pumped twice as hard. Because how many of us seek to find things that we don't want to hear. But Jay Shaw was like a dry sponge that was looking for, for moisture so he could grow and expand. 
He wanted to hear those things that he could benefit and improve his speaking and communication skills. The blunders I've made, number one, is I walked in cold without anybody referring me to the club. This was 43 years ago. And I walked into a group of businessmen because at that time it was an all-male group. And we had, I believe it was seven CPAs. We had numerous attorneys who worked with words. And as Professor Kamenker, law professor, said, the law profession got started by charging per word. That's why contracts are the way they are. And that's why, that's why when you're an attorney, you work with words, and you become an efficient auto. So we can learn from those individuals. But as we grew, the club grew, we took women into the club. And that was one of the greatest achievements we've ever had. Because every audience has men and women both. And we need to learn to communicate. And you know, we can't make all the mistakes ourselves. So a mentor is going to help to guide us and direct us. And give us those little bits of nuggets that we can turn into polished stones and gems. And when we learn how to communicate with 53% of the population of the United States, we're going to do a whole lot better. Whether it's in our marriage, whether it's communicating with our parents, our children, whether it's coming up here and telling us how to start a business. When I talk about mentoring, yes, you want to have a specific mentor. But also, understand that just listening to the responses to table topics. Wow. Think back about the ones that we heard this morning. Ben, I mean, they, they were just all so good. And when we can try to emulate, not copy. We don't want to copy because we want to be an original ourselves. But when we can borrow and implement and go ahead and grow from taking what Jordan Kamenker, what Carmela Blardo, and what Blake Smith said, what Jeff Rufinock said, and make it into our own. We can have mentors that are official, we can have those that are unofficial. And this morning I encourage all of us to learn from everyone so that we don't make those colossal mistakes. Come with us, Master.